So we started sort of uh, talking about technological innovation and the effect on households and firms' uh, money demand, really demand for cash. So we're going to be looking at data from Italy in this paper. And Italy is not that strange. There may be that people think, well, Italians, who knows these guys, and not that worthy or something. But it's pretty much in 6% of GDP like in the rest of the world. And their currency is not used anywhere else. And cash is still intensively used in Italy. Italy is relatively backwards if you think about the level of, of development in terms of their bankarization. Now, this is a very important information, uh, the, this variable on the use of cash. If you think about most of our theories of money demand based on transactions, they scale the holdings of money with something that is supposed to be related to transactions, <coughs> but it's kind of like some other variable, like the income or consumption. You really want to know really how much you are using this cash from transactions. And also conceptually, this hope, I hope it will be more clear later on, there's kind of two different margins why you may have cash for the purpose of transactions. One margin is that you may conduct some transactions in cash and some in some other way, credit, for instance, paying with a credit card or something like that. And another source of actually money demand is that given that you're gonna have so many transactions with cash, there's an issue of how much cash you get in average. Now the example of innovations that we have in mind are this sort of uh, kind of technology for withdrawal. Basically, ATM cards, uh, ATM machines, and also having more bank branches. The banking sector in Italy has been really shielded from competition. So that's why, in terms of uh, bankarization, Italy looks a little bit more backward than, than the neighbors of comparable uh, GDP per capita. And in this time, is the time which there are all these pressures from the red for harmonization in the European Union. So you see a big uh, trend in terms of having more banks, more uh, bank branches per person, and also <coughs> increasing the dispersion between different um, areas of Italy, where they have basically kind of local monopolies. The idea is that we're going to, um, we're going to consider the problem for a household that has already decided the cash expenditure. And the reason why, I mean, for us, uh, this is relatively easy to do uh, is because we do have this measure of how much they, of, of the purchases that are paid with cash, as opposed to any other paper. So if you think about this, uh, if you're not familiar with Bamboo you think about uh, how often to put gasoline in your car. So there are two questions first. You need to travel so many miles per month. And there's one question, which is the cash credit question in monetary economics, would be, do I take the train or do I take my car? Now suppose that you decide how many miles you're gonna be taking your car. Now the question is how much gasoline you put in your car and how often you go and replenish, okay? So let me show you the model. So the model is very simple, in kind of a model. You minimize an opportunity cost of having cash times the average cash balances, which now can be written as C over 2N from here. So if you draw very often, that means that you have very little cash in average times the cost of each of the withdrawals. So pretend that it says B times N, this is really one more dollar. So imagine that the bank, instead of charging you B, it says, look, the first time, the first five times that we withdraw money, it's free. And starting with the six, we charge you B. Really what we have in mind is that, you know, you go through your life and then the main cost is the opportunity cost of time. And when there are more ATMs and stuff, then you will pass by through the ATMs more often. So these are free withdrawals, but there's a limit to that. So there is this new parameter P. Okay. Uh, except for that, this is kind of Bamontoni. Bamontoni says the elasticity is one cup. Estimated elasticity are typically very low. So there's a sense in which this model will kind of give you low elasticity. And there's a sense in which also, this comes back to your topic about uh, when they shift to velocity. There's a sense that people think that the elasticities are kind of low because of the effect of technologies that allow you to withdraw money. So think about what is gonna happen here is that the length of this segment is gonna be, you know, it's gonna be, you know, instead of five, you're gonna have six. So this is a different way of parameterizing the technology. You still have the cost B, but they have this other parameter P. And they have different meaning, as you can see, because they really, the parameter P changes the shape of the money demand. 
So I'm just rewriting the money demand from Valmontoli, well, from this uh, version of Valmontoli with these two parameters. The, the, the two ways of technological progress are probably a decrease in B, it costs you less to go to the bank if you have to, but also there are more of these free withdrawal opportunities because there's more density of banks and ATMs. And notice that the two have opposite effects on the hat. So it's not clear whether the money demand will look less, more or less as bank total. But this state state model has two predictions, that with this parameter you may affect the shape in a very brutal way. The elasticity is either zero or one half. But you think about it, you know, it's some, maybe sometimes it's zero, sometimes it's one half. But it doesn't have these features. So now I want to have a model that will combine both things. Given M star, you know the decisions. Now this part is accounting, in a sense. Given M star and the and value of P and the value of 4 pi for inflation, I could figure out how much money you have in average. I could figure out how many withdrawals you make. I could figure out how, many, how much money you have at the time of the withdrawal. These are precisely the variables that are asked in the survey. That's why I want to figure them out, because I want to estimate them all. There's one more variable of interest, which is the number of trips, which is also a function of M star. The idea is that you're going to have, for a given household, you could estimate the model. Why? Because you have a bunch of different decisions, how often to go to the bank, how much money you withdraw on average, how much you have, how much you have at the time of a withdrawal, all related to essentially two parameters. So essentially there are two parameters to estimate, these two. P and this parameter. Now it is true, we have observations of C and we have observations of R, and hence, if we estimate this number, then we could divide by the product of C times R and obtain D. But really what the model, uh, the predictions of the models are, given P and B over C over R, it gives us predictions for all these variables, which we measure in the data. And then we plot here those with and without ATM cards. So in, it, in this axis is with the ATM cards and this without ATM cards. Notice that the value of P is essentially always bigger for those with ATM cards, which we didn't impose, and we think that is what we should be getting. Our model is designed to have an, an internet elasticity that is less than one half. But we ended up estimating our elasticity is great it ends up being that even though P is very high and even though there is a lot of precautions, the elasticity is kind of very close to one half. Then we redid um, the uh, estimates of the cost of inflation of Lucas. And we get numbers that are half of these numbers. Now if you think about these numbers, they are all the function of the interest rate elasticity. We have an interest rate elasticity, it's not quite one half as he has, he just imposed that. We got something that is different from one half, but our estimates are half of it. So the question is, what's going on? What's going on is the following. Remember the very simple model, the one with this, the one in the man. So this is Bowman Tommy, but then what happened is at a very low interest rate, the money in the man flattens out. These are interest rates, and this is money in the man. From demand here, we know that the, the uh, consumer surplus is what measures benefit. Now, it is true that around the interest rate in Italy, we have an, uh, locally, across households, we have an elasticity that's close to one half. Think about where we are in this, in this part. But if we drive interest rates all the way to zero, we hit the flat part. So the consumer surplus is much smaller. Ours is a smooth version of this part. And that's why we get uh, welfare benefits of decreasing inflation they are on the order of half of the ones that look at here. Ours have the advantage we think of relatively that we don't have big variations on interest rate, but we have all this uh, wealth of the cross section. Uh, it's unclear which, you know, in some sense, this has different type of evidence, but that the fact that we have so, you know, uh, so many variables that are informative about, uh, about um, cash management, we kind of tend to like our estimates more. 